We know that exercise is so important in musculoskeletal pain and that's very true in tendon pain. Tendon pain is no different. So we need to incorporate exercise as part of our rehabilitation. That's a really important way to get people you know, moving and get them active. It's important for the tendon and the muscle. We know that that's best practice. But if you just do exercise, if you go off to the gym and you do a self-paced exercise, which is what we prescribe as physios, you'll get changes to the tendon and the muscle and you'll get stronger because you'll get substrate changes, but you don't change that drive to the muscle. You don't see a motor cortex change. So as we know, pain is made up of lots of different inputs and in tendon pain, it appears that a big input is the, the nociceptive contribution. So the contribution um, from the tendon. And that's because clinically, the pain remains very localized to the tendon, regardless of length of time of symptoms. And also it's intimately linked with load. So we know that all pain is an output and we've got all these other um, modifiers, but we know that this driver is a huge contribution to the the clinical picture. So I was interested in looking at that clinical presentation, but also comparing it to another clinical presentation like diffuse knee pain. So I looked at patellar tendinopathy, I looked at diffuse anterior knee pain, so patellofemoral joint pain, and I also looked at control athletes. So athletes that were um, jumping athletes, but they had no pain or pathology. And my question was, does the brain or the motor cortex and those projections kind of care whether or not the pain is localized or diffuse? So the way I did that was to use some equipment called transcranial magnetic stimulation, and that really probes our motor cortex. And you can look at the, the drive to the muscle. So that's your brake and your accelerator. So your, your amount of inhibition and your amount of acceleration, and it's a balance. And what we found is that it was profoundly different in people that had localized pain and people that had diffuse pain. And I found that fascinating. It was the first um, study of my PhD. My hypothesis was completely wrong, but it completely changed the whole path of my PhD because I could look at the, the profile of people with patellar tendon pain and this huge amounts of um, excitability and inhibition, this, this altered kind of profile and say, well, as physiotherapists, do we do enough to address the motor cortex or address the drive to the muscle? So what we need to do is incorporate some of these strategies from neuroscience into our exercise-based rehabilitation. And a really simple one is something like the metronome. So if you use a metronome to pace your strength training activity, what you get are the changes that you want at a muscle and tendon level, but you also get the changes to your motor cortex, your brake and your accelerator, because it, it fires up all these little interneurons between different parts of your brain, your auditory cortex and your motor cortex, your frontal lobe, because you're focusing. So you're kind of firing up the whole brain and involving the whole brain in your rehabilitation to repace that movement. One of the things that seems to be important in the neuroscience literature is that the auditory cues are rhythmic and they're actually quite predictable. So it's not like you're waiting for the cue and then responding, you're almost anticipating it. And so even though the visual cortex has these huge projections to the motor cortex, there's a level of processing and there's a bit of a delay. The auditory cues appear to be very effective because they're, they're rhythmic and they're, they're anticipated as opposed to you responding to them in the way that you do with a visual cue. You can get free metronome apps and then you can tailor it to exactly what you're giving your patient. Um, the Australian Ballet, for example, they have their athletes listen to the metronome as they go up and down stairs and they increase the pace of that activity up to the speed of Petit Allegro and then they know that their athletes are ready to go back into a modified class. So you can really tailor it as a physio depending on the person in front of you and just being a little bit creative, I think.